These people are my family. This is my tribe. It's a place where I know people are gonna tell me the truth. The emotions that I felt then surged up in me as to how strong this barrier that I built it was and how it impacted my, uh, my relationship with my son. I am not weak, that I am strong and everything else is just mind talk. My guard was up and that's where I would snap or shut off or whatever the case is. And it, it damaged me, my relationships and hindered me from really flourishing. What I'm finding is the more and more subtle ways that I judge myself or make myself afraid, now I can turn it around more quickly. Any barriers between people get broken down in the midst of this. People open themselves up to each other. They learn things about themselves. The, the boundaries fall away. I think it is what we seek. We seek to be part of that oneness. I think the world is so hungry for it. Our purpose is to guide the mind, to reveal and expand the higher self, to help participants get past all the self-accusations and demands, and to take a stand on what is good, real, and loving about themselves. On the 1st of November, 2019, I departed for Huntsville, Alabama to play on team for the More to Life weekend. My first stop was the home of Melody Breyer, who founded the Huntsville More to Life team more than 20 years ago. This community was sort of born around my kitchen table. Melody Breyer was in a Course in Miracles group with me, we were doing a little study of that, and she went off and took the More to Life training. And when she came back, Everyone in the group noticed that she and her husband were just different. Like, oh, he's giving her eye contact. <laughs> They're holding hands. And whatever they had, we wanted it. One of the things I love about our community is that we have uh, this history. Well, we started together and Melody came back and was excited and said she's going to bring it here. And. Um, I saw the changes in Melody and said, oh, let's go get some. Warren Kahn was the senior trainer for the weekend course. He traveled to Huntsville from his home in Sebastopol, California, 15 minutes northwest of San Francisco. Warren took his first mortal life training in 1982. I just remember just going, how did they do that? You know, somebody would stand up and they would say yada yada and, and and Brad or Roy, they would say a few things and all of a sudden this whole thing would open up. Like we're beach glass. That they could see into us somehow. I wanted to know how to do that. How, what are they doing? How are they doing that? This is amazing. It's, it's magical, transformative. The trainer who was Warren Kahn at that time, he said, you're not saying no. And, and I couldn't see it at that time, but Warren just looked right at me and said, you are not saying no. And obviously I was very angry and frustrated and left there and, you know, mm, that's, that's wrong. But I later realized that that wasn't wrong and that was completely true. And the ability to say fully no, especially to somebody who had a hard time accepting no, um, has transformed pretty much everything for me. Making that full choice and being able to say no to things that were not okay with me um, and yes to what I wanted. So that was, and every aspect of my life has been changed by that. He said, can you remember a time when you first felt that? And I just let whatever come out, come out. And it was um, a life shock that I had when I was in my grandmother's bathroom and um, so simple, but I, she had a tissue box and there was a cover over the tissue box and I pulled them apart and I thought I broke it. And this is just what came to my mind. And uh, so I ran home because we lived down the street and what was coming out of me was, I'm stupid, I'm stupid, I break things, I'm stupid, I'm a liar. 
and I just hid. And I stayed hidden for a long, long time. But that belief that I had that I was stupid was, I was probably seven years old. And uh, it still comes up, you know, it's still there sometimes. And I have a way to deal with it. I used to think, okay, more to life is about letting go of that. I won't have to feel any of that pain or suffering or angst or fear. It'll all be about more joy, more joy, more joy. And when I, as I learned, it opens in both directions. I feel the pain of the world more. You get the whole life experience. And when you do that, you are really getting the full measure of life as it is. The pain and the ecstasy. More joy, more ecstasy, more grace, and more you know, the suffering and loss and mortality and all of that is part of the deal. So I'm in for all of it. I'll cry when I need to cry and I'll scream when I need to scream and I, I'll love fiercely. One of my beliefs is that I'm too messy for people to love. I have ADHD and had it as a child and it wasn't a thing that people talked about but you know just got in a lot of trouble for a lot of different things and so all of those things were internalized and I'm messy and I'm you know disorganized and I'm you know I have to be able to um, deliver concrete things like I believed that that was my job and that was the only valuable thing in the world. I'm really not very good at those things and it's completely okay because I'm really good at other things and now here I get to be who I am. When I align with reality, the boat lifts. That sailboat lifts right out of the water and we fly. We're in the zone, we're in the pocket, we're in the oneness of it all and then we are delivered to the wonder of a child the innocence, the lack of agenda, the lack of needing to do anything or be anything more than who we really are. After talking with Amy and Warren at Melody's home, we went out for lunch with Jeff to learn more about the role of the trainers at the More to Life weekend. Warren was my trainer, gosh, almost over 11 years ago now. And I, I, was in that, I went in that training and within 10 minutes, I was like, oh, that's what I want to do with my life, you know? I want to be able to work with people the way Warren does. I want to be able to love these people, you know, the way Warren does. And, um, How about the way Jeff does? <laughs> yeah, I'm learning the way Jeff does. And uh, it's powerful, you know, it's a powerful way to live. More to life has a path. It has a, a way. It has a set of skills and tools and understandings that help me wake up and find the way to align to that which life is giving me. You can see when someone takes something in and has a new realization in this, you know, just a, a live sort of moment, you know, you could call it an aha moment, but it really it's just kind of a coming alive, it's awakening. I'm even, I'm even sitting up because that's what you see. You, know, you see people stand up and uh, become more of themselves. And it's in their face. It's in their body. It's in the tone of voice. You know, a lot, a lot of times you hear people settling in, just settling in and being authentic without some of the extra dramas added. You know? And um, yeah, that's powerful thing to watch and be a part of. It's visible and there's a sense, you know, inside you, you know, oh, something's landed. Right. Part of it is, I know it's landed in them sometimes because it's, something's landed in me. Friday afternoon, we headed over to the hotel where the weekend course would be held. The team was setting up the training room. I pulled aside a few team members to hear their experiences with More to Life. In More to Life, one of the terms we use is mind talk, which is defined as 
the little voices in your head that are whispering all the bad things and all the things that are so and all the things that have to be and all the things that never will be and will absolutely have to happen. All those little voices, those nagging voices that just get inside you. Before I went to more to life, I used to journal all of that. I called it something else. I called it spiral brain because it's this spiral in my brain that just took me to the bottom every time and I didn't know how to get out of it. I knew it was there, I knew it was false, but I couldn't break the cycle. And so I would spend several times a week, I'd spend an hour or two hours journaling until I would get to the point where I could cry myself to sleep. And I wanted out of that cycle. And from more to life, I got a tool that enabled me to see that spiral, to look down into it, and to not get sucked in. I could see it, I could understand it, I could stand in the middle of that whirlpool, and I was still okay. What this program offers in the way of clarity of thought and fidelity to the truth, an absolute commitment to the truth, both inside and with the rest of the world, uh, are potentially the salvation of mankind. It's that big that uh, the problems in our culture, in our society, the problems in our families and communities, these are largely based on lies and deception. I wanted to show you, I wanted to show them, I wanted to show the world how clever I was. And how that looked was I would talk about famous names or um, drop names or drop theories or, you know, just brag about stuff. And I'm, I blush to think about how I was. Uh, I was just proving to people how clever I was because I didn't believe it myself. I realised that you know, I was just proving and I didn't need to prove anything. And I came to the point where I don't need to do this, I don't need to do that. I'm absolutely fine as I am, absolutely fine. The quality of relationships between human beings depends ultimately on a complete alignment with reality, which means being in truth at all times. People say, I want to be loved. Well, I say, are you loving? How are you being? What are you bringing in the world? Where is your heart shut off and cold and resentful and, you know, that heart ache? Because the heart wants to love, it knows how to love, it wants to run free like the stallion kicking down that door. Let it out. Monday morning, I went to the home of Tessa Lucas, one of the team leaders who organized the More to Life weekend. I'm retired now, and my husband's retired. We are retired from the same organization. Uh, he worked for NASA, and I worked for a NASA contractor. And together, we worked in the uh, flight control room, the control center, for space station payloads here at Marshall Space Flight Center. It's the science experiments aboard station. We operate them. Space is hard. Space is unforgiving. One of the things that resonated with us about this training, well, first of all, it made total sense, but the precision of it, the impeccability of it, and how afterwards we held ourselves more accountable. Space is unforgiving, so there isn't room to say that's good enough. There's not room for sloppy. So there was something about the precision and impeccability, the intention that we learned in Mortal Life that rang. And yes, I did apply it to my job every day, every day. The reason that my husband and I went to the weekend is we were 
at an extreme point in our marriage. We were at a breaking point. And I actually demanded that we go to this weekend. But the way I was holding it was that, by golly, we're going to go fix you. That's the level of resentment I had. And of course, he had a corresponding level of resentment. And we, we had been married 22 years. We did not see a way forward at that point. So uh, we went and I started the sessions. I would look at him. Every time the trainer uh, made a point that I thought he ought to get, by golly, because he's the broken one. And we're here to fix him. There's nothing wrong with me. But there was something about another woman's share about how she was with her family, the demands that she was placing on them that made me go, oh, oh, oh. I do that too. And I've been doing that this weekend. So although it was very difficult for me to do it, I stood up and I told him, I see what I'm doing. And I want you to have your experience, however it comes out. I release any demands in any expectation, because it turns out I have work to do too, and I'm going to do that. And then like it shifted something in me, it shifted something in the marriage. And We've now been married 42 years. We use the tools still. We have a shared vocabulary. We have a way of being real and vulnerable with each other. Kimberly, Louisa, Scott, and Lirio stayed at Tessa's home for the weekend. They were all connected through Kimberly's grandson, Liam. I came here with Louisa and Lirio and Scott. I love them. They're my fam they're my family that life brought me. Just what they're going through in their life and what they're going for in their life. Louisa is the mother of my grandson. Scott is her boyfriend. And Lirio is the other grandma to my grandson. Kimberly? Uh, she's been telling me, I don't know, for how many years, maybe two, something, about the program. I'm like, yeah, no. Mm -hmm. um, finally, something, you know, is like, yes, I'll do it. Liam was born with a rare liver disease called biliary atresia. He was jaundice, he was failure to thrive, and he just wasn't growing. And so we went through many pediatricians to see what was wrong with him, and we finally found out that, you know, he had the disease. So at 10 months, he got a liver transplant, and he's doing really good. He's a wise little guy. He's rambunctious, willful, sweet, smart, just a bundle of energy. He is a miracle baby. That is first and foremost. But I was still struggling with my relationship with his father. I had a, in my mind, I had a fairy tale that I wanted to, you know, be with him and be a family. And, you know, Liam was going through all this, but when Liam was going through all this, me and Cheyenne were at the same time not connecting anymore. We were separating. Um, and that was really hard for me to go through that and, you know, have Liam go through his transplant and then battle with Cheyenne and trying to keep him in a relationship when in reality it was just over. So that really hit me hard and it has affected me and my other relationships because I have closed off a lot. So that's why I came here to work on, to not close people off and to really work on myself to be vulnerable.
I want to love on them and have no walls and just be with them. And, you know, we have this commonality with Liam with not knowing the future. I mean, we don't know the future, period. <laughs> but just not knowing the future and how can we come together as a family and be together in, in a way that's supportive, unguarded, and loving. And so I say to you, people who are viewing this video, what haven't you not cleaned up with those that are in your life? What's unsaid, unhealed? We have a way of doing that in mortal life, learning how to do that. Clean up those things that you can clean up that are separating for you. So don't wait. Come. You can learn how to do this. And then your heart will be released like a stallion out of the barn to love. And not only to love, but you'll also receive the love. Thank you to More to Life. And whoever had the crazy idea of making this program. It's an invitation. There is more to life. Want to play? Monday evening, it was time to fly home. My heart was full. I felt connected. <laughs>